I'll oh, hopefully, okay. hopefully be back on after in April. April? Beginning of April. Sure. That's what, That's what I said, hopefully. <laughs> Why are you putting it so far back? Yeah. 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 How is everyone doing having eaten? Fed, is everyone fed and watered? <laughs> no? Give food and water. It's fine. You sure? Streamers can deal with it. All right. If that's the case, I will start streaming then. Okay, and we're going. So when last we left, you guys had started, we'll call it a tavern crawl. In Evicro, you had just gone into the Riverside Inn, knowing that when Lucian has his events, that's usually where he starts. So up here, the Riverside Inn, where are you guys all met? And I believe you had walked in and had a mix of perception <laughs> and investigation roles here. And uh, I believe only Arazu looked closely enough to determine that he doesn't think anyone there is Lucian. Well, I went in and talked to the bartender. Yeah, and she said that he had been here, but yeah. has since left. It's... Yeah. So, what would you guys like to do? Next bar on the row. Woo! Crawling down the street. Yeah, going across this bridge. Rolling down the road. Just, yeah. just curious, how armed is everybody else? I'm fully armed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Erizu is a living weapon. Uh, All right. No, no, I get that. But, like, how are you carrying your sword with you from bar to my, bar? Or my, special, you, my special knife? That's always there. Yeah. Okay. I, I imagine he sleeps with it like a teddy bear. This, this oh. next blade comes everywhere with me. I don't really get a choice. <laughs> they have, one would say, almost an unnatural attachment to their special blades. Um, the question asking, is, is Doll wearing the bear head? Always. <laughs> people, <laughs> in general, most people in Maaka, especially in Avikro, would panic at seeing a walking giant skeleton. And he would be a walking giant skeleton that's bear. <laughs> I forget the term. Oh, sorry, or whatever. So it would not be even just a normal human skeleton. But a creepy, wet, gross bear head is cool. Why is he wet? When did he get what? He's gotten wet a few times. Is it dry now? I don't yeah, know. No, he's dried. He's since dried. You guys remember did press digitation on him after the pool because you didn't want the smell of wet fur. Mm -hmm. This is you guys did. Very specific about this. <laughs> um, if you're asking about how armed the general townsfolk are, not very much, especially on this side of town. You know that once you cross that bridge and get into the more naval section people do tend to carry things like like crossbows or daggers swords they're not usually in armor but most people especially if they are sailors um, especially if they're just fresh back from a fishing trip or something like that they will have some kind of weapon on them it's just okay. um but yeah armor armor itself is odd so i just wondered because i did i took off my armor to not be not, totally to not intimidating yeah. But if everybody else is carrying their weapons, I am carrying a sword. Okay, sure. Yeah, armor armor would stand out, especially full or even half plate armor. Most of what you'll see here is just going to be leather. Um, very few people, even in the Navy, are going to bother with something like chain mail. You know, they'll have different forms of hardened leather instead. So yeah, that all stands out. Um, so across the way, there are, we'll say, the... Uh, Anne at the Riverside Inn gave you a few options of bars that she knows Lucian likes to go to um, in no specific order. So right away when you cross and in the fishing quarter, there is one. There's another one that's further down the road west, closer to the political and legal section, and then even further south in the naval quarter. Um... Uh, so it is up to you guys if you would like to just go in order and hit that first one, or if you want to go in a different direction, run errands on the way, whatever you want. I'm going in the first one, wherever it is over here. 
that very first one right away? Yeah. If it's right there, might as well. Yeah. Okay. Probably if normally people would probably go in order of which they get to, I would think. Unless this is just a really shitty one or the best one and they want to leave it leave it for last. I don't know. If you if you wanna know something like that, since you've kind of been in the area, I don't imagine either you or Arazu are much of a pub crawler yourselves. But the one closest to you here in the fishing quarter is a pretty standard tavern. There's nothing really special one way or the other about it. It's really middle of the road on everything. Further west, the one by the political quarter is called the Nesting Crow. That one is uh, a little bougier because it's by the people who have money. Um, and then further south in the naval quarter is the Whale's Belly, which is a dive bar. That is a sailor's dive bar. Do I know Irk? No. Hmm. What he would drink? What kind of drinks would he be going for? Is he the fancy wine drinker, or is he going to be the... <laughs> Fair question. Um, since you haven't been drinking with him, I'll say that you wouldn't know his drinking habits. Some people will start with ale, work their way towards heavier spirits. Some people will just pick one thing and go straight through. I'll say, since you haven't been drinking with him, I'll say you wouldn't know that. You could guess if you want like an insight check or something, but... Yeah, I'll insight check. Okay. It and probably won't be good. Fighting but... like the elven condition, <laughs> the half elf condition of what? Ooh, like nineteen. Well, shit. Okay. So you do think that he probably wants to go for wine? He's an elf, but you also know that he's <laughs> what's a nice term for he's rough, <laughs> um, so not quite that classy. So maybe he would be into some of the stronger spirits, but you don't know maybe which would go first. Which bar is most likely to have dancing? Oh my god. Dancing is going to be... No, dancing is going to be the nesting crow because that's the, uh, the <clears> upper <throat> scale. So they probably have an equivalent of like salsa nights. Well, what kind that of dancing are you looking for? Like? I, I think he probably just went to the nesting crow. We should totally go there. Pole dancing down here at the bar? <laughs> right, like, I think that's definitely at the whale's belly. <laughs> okay, so I know Joe Kevin trying to think of a way to work that kind of stuff in. I haven't figured it out yet. But it'll be somewhere, just probably not in this town. <laughs> okay. So you want to go to the nesting crow first? No, that, well, that's what she suggested, but she... Okay. But if Jen wanted to just stop right there, that actually makes sense, so... Yeah, just look inside, see there there, there, and then the leave. Search Ooh. pattern, not just randomly choosing. Okay. <laughs> so when you stop in, this, is, this bar is just the pearl... Like I said, it's a very standard run of the mobile bar. Everything looks kind of like they were trying to be, like the Riverside Inn, which was has, as you remember, something of a reputation for being a little more upscale, um, but still accessible to everyone, at least for drinking and dining. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what you see from the outside. Uh, I guess we uh, poke our heads in and see if we can see them. <laughs> Are you actually poking your head in, like opening the door and sticking it in Scooby-Doo style, or are people entering the bar? I'm poking my head in now. There's trouble afoot, and I'm not sticking <laughs> my whole body in there unless I know who's in there. Okay, that's right. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, so for, please refresh my memory. With Lucian, uh -huh. do we think he's involved with the trouble, and which is why we're being stealthy, or...? Um, you, you might have thought that to start with, but with the revelations of the attacker's memories, you don't believe that he is anymore, or, I mean, that's up to everyone's individual characters, but evidence points away from him. Um, and what Mo you're Mostly, he's a drunk, and he knows the bars. He's not a, he's not a drunk. <laughs> he just um, enjoys his drink. <laughs> yeah, so what it is, since you guys are looking for that tavern in the memories, you're hoping that maybe, if you can't find it yourselves, you're hoping that you can find Lucian, and then he may be able to tell you where it is if you describe it or share the memory with him. Because he left before you finished that one. Okay, I will walk right in and look around for him. Okay, um, give me a perception then. Perception. And Jen, you're continuing to look for specific other people. In can I do a perception too? Okay, fine, perception too. Fine. Yeah, I feel I bad for you because you're investigating. 20. Okay, 
Nice you movie. don't see the people you're looking for, Jin. You good, they're not there. Um, oh god, Alaris and Arazu. Yeah. So you guys, again, you do not see Lucian. Um, I forget, did Alaris experience the assailant's memory, or was that just Auntie? Who did? I forget. It was Wiscava. Auntie and Wiscava. And it was just Auntie and Wiscava. Okay. So, Wiscava didn't roll, and Alaris wouldn't know for sure, but Arazu, you look in, you don't see the setting from that memory. Um, and you guys also do not see Lucian. Works for me. I'll uh, turn to Jen, shrug, and say I don't see Lucian. All right. Then I guess we're going on to the next one. <laughs> so, I go ahead and um, use minor illusion to ask the bartender if he's seeing Lucian tonight and just kind of <laughs> a little miniature bust of him as a reminder as to the person we're looking yeah. for. Okay, yeah, the bartender recognizes him and goes, Ah, oh, Lucian, yeah, yeah, he just left. Uh, I think he was going to the nesting crow. I'm not sure, though. He just went that way, and he gestures west. I, I told you. I mean, he's a dancer. It's obvious. <laughs> Ballet, specifically. <laughs> You'll get a kick out of this later then, Chester. <laughs> okay, so you guys are heading to the nesting crow? Yeah, Did sure. Did you know this, Chris? N no, I still oh, have him. I lost Terry, but I still have Chris. Yeah, Terry vanished. Chris, did you lose Tucker? Oh, well, he's... he's a, yeah, it's just a dark screen on mine. Okay. But you've been going in and out. Terry just messaged me. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm so, able to see all of my. Like, characters. I have my character sheet up, and even that's been kind of flickering in and out, like some of the black. Sure. So I'm thinking there's a roll twenty. Okay. Yeah. Going on. So Terry said he can see and hear us, but can't send messages. We'll try another day. Doll will just be cooking, cleaning. Sorry, Terry. That sucks. Okay. Yeah. I guess so. So Doll is not with you guys then, and he's staying back. Maybe someone can pick him up a fun cooking line or something while you're out to make up for that. That sucks. Maybe a book on how to cook. Oh! <laughs> oh. oh you're almost tired really, tonight. I can't yeah, really you are. Enough, and I feel really bad because he actually has high skills in cooking, but he keeps using that pan. <laughs> and so when, when Doll uses that pan, it's just a crapshoot. That's what he uh, wants to That's what I he know. wants. Yeah. I know. I know. We, we designed it that way on purpose. And he doesn't know that what the new roles I've changed are. I added new options. Sorry, there's that. Okay, so you guys go to the nest and throw next. And for, on the outside, you see, you know those like repurposed, intentionally weathered wood items that usually white moms like getting at like hand me down stores? And with that, it's like it's white paint and they've intentionally like flaked and sanded at it. That's basically what this sign is. And Everybody, I'm assuming, knows the pose of Geralt in the hot tub, where he's leaning back. <laughs> the logo on the sign for the nesting crow is a crow in that position, <laughs> leaning back over a crow's nest <laughs> on the ship. So, that's what... I can hear you playing, Tucker. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Uh -huh, okay. Liking your camera doesn't take out the audio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. Subtle. All uh, right. So anyway, the nesting crow plays at being a true sailor's tavern, but doesn't quite succeed. Instead, it's almost glaringly obvious that this is the Moroccan equivalent of a hipster dive bar. Um, this place is, as you look like just from the outside through the windows, the windows included, it's practically spotless. Um, but inside, strung up around the ceiling, like Christmas lights almost, is really elaborate lengths of macrame. And from those dangle glass floats of different sizes and colors and it's all very intentional <laughs> uh tables are repurposed old barrels driftwood things like that that's what you can see from the outside all right <clears throat> well i just walk in be okay I, I i as i do that i turn to jen and i just try not to be weird this time <laughs> it's <laughs> It's just a bar. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> you don't know me. All right. Uh, Have you so you've gotten into some trouble in other bars, Jim. Not in bars. I'm. There's trouble coming this way. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So you wanted to miss that last time. Um, 
one of the there was a symbol, a house crest that they saw on a piece of paper by these owned by these people, these bad people, and it was familiar to Jin, and it was people that he is not fond of, shall we say? Okay. So he, he didn't share that information with us. Though. He did not. Which is why I'm trying to be really vague. <laughs> well, yeah, Erzu knows. And Erzu, in front of everyone, said that if he finds the person responsible for this situation being the booby trap that wiped that man's mind, he is going to kill them. And he needed to make sure that Jin was on board with that situation. <laughs> that, that's what got said out loud. Yeah. And then there was commentary from Wizkava about Jin and um, I think Urdu. Yeah, there was. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so Wiscava, after you left, actually, yeah, Wiscava pulled Urdu aside to go to the powder room, and said, "So basically, how long has this been going on between you and Jin?" And Urdu does not comprehend what. He's just like, "What? What do you mean? He's been staying with us for a little while now. Guy brought him home. Blah blah blah." So Wiscava was basically trying to set up a double date between Jin and Urdu and Wiscava and Lucian. He's focusing on dancing. For some reason, dancing is the thing. Evolution <laughs> on the dance floor. That's what this is. She wants to see the elf booty jiggle. I don't know. That's, um, <laughs> that means in my head now. <laughs> All right. But yes. So that was. That's what that angle is. What with the insistence. And we're in a place that does dancing. So. Yep. Tonight. There, you see what is likely normally a dance floor. It has a couple of tables on it now, though. This must not be the night that they organize dancing. But you can see a raised dance floor in one corner opposite where the bar is. Um, I don't know. Does anyone else walk in with Wiscava? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, Arazu, are you walking in or are you staying outside the gym? I or go in. Coming inside? Yeah, if they go in, I'm going in. Oh, okay. I'm just I mean, hiding behind the door. Is what we're looking for, so... Okay, well, as you guys walk in, a hostess immediately comes up to you, uh, a young Triton man. He's wearing the very authentic white billowy pirate shirt with the ties on the front, except it, you can glance around and see most of the workers have that shirt, but the ties are undone on almost all of them. Nice, deep v-neck, uh, tucked into very tight black leather pants, Toy. spotless boots, so again... <laughs> It, hipster playing at dive bar. Uh, and so this gentleman immediately comes up to you and Muscava, since you're the first one that enters his. Uh, so, table for four? Well, not if I'm lucky tonight. Okay, wow, wow. Uh, Make it. But yes, yes. Actually, you know what? four is okay for now. Just, I might. Get up and move. <laughs> and he, he gives you this really perplexed look like, why would you do that? And just goes, all right, and brings you over to a table near the window that's available. Four top seats you down. In the center is, <laughs> is just like, the again, the equivalent of a mason jar with some flowers in it. It's very nice. And says someone will be right with you and walks away. I pick up one of the flowers and give it a good sniff. It's just one of the local flowers. It's not not like rose equivalents, but wildflowers. I am discreetly looking around for Lucian. With a 13, you do not see someone that you think would be Lucian. Hilarious. With a I'm 16... Busy, I'm busy indexing all the, the lethality p potential in the room. and Yeah. It's, it's, You're probably too busy counting how many bits of macrame could fall down and become a noose at any given moment. Um, <laughs> for Alaris, you get... You're paying a little bit more attention for people. And you remember Lucian, long dark hair. You don't see very many people fitting that description. And the ones that do aren't of his stature. Since he is tall, lanky, half-elf. Okay. This guy needs to stop moving from place to place. It's like he's never <laughs> he like goes in, has a drink, and then leaves. You're assuming he made it here in safety. <sighs> I I am not so suddenly looking for hot guys who don't have women on their arms. What's Kava? Why are you staring at me? <laughs> <laughs> Like a piece of meat. 
Actually, when I heard Holly should say, why are you staring at Jin? Because he's probably going to hire Christmas than I do. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, Um. so if you, Wiscava, are keeping an eye out for what you assume to be eligible bachelors, oh. lots of people are in groups, Um. so you can't really tell if there are necessarily couples. A lot of them are mixed men and women groups, and you can tell looking around at that that in terms of eligible bachelors, pretty much everyone here seems to come from at least a little money. This is definitely a ritzier <clears throat> place. A lot of them are younger, but... <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. But no Lucian. <laughs> no Lucian here. Well, you haven't rolled. Oh. Arazu was distracted. Alaris didn't, saw people with similar hair, but that did not fit the stature. Okay. No. <laughs> I had I had my two yeah. good rolls earlier. Yeah, you had your really good rolls earlier. <laughs> yeah, Wiscava, you also do not believe you see Lucian. And Jin, you're, I'm assuming, just a little too distracted looking for other things. Or trying to be aware for other things. <laughs> I'm confused by Wiscava. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Every time he looks that way, Wiscava's staring at him. It's really <laughs> Yeah. Every now and then she like really subtly leans and like licks her lips real slowly <laughs> while making really intense eye contact. <laughs> that really great move that definitely works in the real world. Okay. Yeah, so works. so yeah. I'm not seeing any hot single guys. So do now I'm just they looking for be. they might be it, but you have to talk to them. Put right. it that way. Not right, but I'm not seeing like anyone obviously. Right. So now I'm just looking at wherever the dance floor is, I'm just looking for anybody who's like, you know, looks like they're they're trying to get out there, but not, you know. Oh, like, so the dance floor has tables on it at the moment. Oh, okay. It's being used for seating right now. It's clearly when they have these dance nights, what they'll do is clear the tables out and open up the dance floor. But this is one of the nights where you don't see live musicians or anything either, so nobody's playing. Okay. So I When's the weekend? I actually was going to try and figure out what day of the week you guys are on, but honestly, yeah. I have no idea. So we'll call this like a middle of the week, like a Thursday. Yeah. So you're heading into the weekend, but you're not quite there yet. Maybe tomorrow. So, <laughs> Maybe so tomorrow. do I think it's not like a daily thing or are we just right. early? You get the sense that this is not a daily thing. That is probably something that they do. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday or something okay. like that. Well, then Wiscava is visibly bummed. Oh, was Kava wanted to dance. She didn't even care about the rest of us. She just like, I just want to dance. <laughs> Mission's mission. I'm here for the dance. Yeah, I was like, the mission. What mission? I'm here. You can to move this table out of the floor. I'm just saying, there's nothing saying she can't start a whole movement. As you guys are here and doing your various say things, uh, another waiter does approach you. Is a slightly older trained male, and he sees Wiscava's. <laughs> crestfallen face. Is everything all right, ma'am? Yes, it, it's fine. I, it, I just was looking for a little bit more life. But I understand. I understand it's the wrong night. Um, you haven't seen a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Lucian. And I <laughs> bring up a little mini bust of him again. He looks a little startled at the mirror image, he's clearly not used to seeing that. Um, it's so, magic. Jeez, get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. And I, I start describing Lucian a little bit too long before I notice what occurs again. And then I just... Oh, get, well, getting yeah. a little like dreamy eyes. eyes that you yeah. Yeah. He yeah. has this really long hair that just looks really silky to touch. I'm not sure, but I would imagine. And, yeah. <laughs> No, she doesn't. She's, she's really not that into Lucian. I know, I know, but it's now that you've put it out there, it's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Pick at it. Okay. She might not think she's into him, but the rest of us definitely think she's into him. <laughs> well, only Urdu knows right now, and she not anymore. She not doesn't. anymore. <laughs> um, so he does visibly startle at the minor illusion. He is not used to magic. And was yes, I believe he was here earlier, or. 
he stuck his head in, but I think he also thought tonight was a dance night, so he left. I'm really sorry about that, by the way. We've moved the nights. It is now, we'll say, the Moroccan equivalent. Of, it's now Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It used to be Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, but the crowd gets just a little more excited about the weekend, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course. Makes sense. I mean, so there's no, like, late night dancing later? Not here, unfortunately. Well, where in the city may I find that, if that's what I was looking for? He looks reluctant to, like, send you anywhere else because that's bad for business. So, Is, like, is this gentleman handsome? <laughs> By Triton standards, probably. He is fishy and has the <laughs> gill ear things or the thin ear things. And, you know. Okay, I'm green. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Very fair. <laughs> Then, yeah, I assume by Triton standards, he's got sharp features. <laughs> sure. All right, let, let's start over again. Where are you going when you get off tonight? <laughs> Probably back home of an early shift in the morning. <laughs> Does he look like he's getting the... the, he looks the like why he is he saying this? Yeah, he looks like he is, but he also looks at the other people on the ta at the table... What with the weaponry and such, and the two not super cheery looking gentlemen, and it's like I don't know if I want to get involved in whatever. I'm super <laughs> cheery. I take offense, right? <laughs> not the yes, word that I could have been in this game. Okay, this is my happy face. <laughs> so, sir, please don't worry. The rest of us are not planning on staying out late. We have to head back home afterwards. Gustava really wants to experience the life here in Evicro, though, and we are unable to assist her. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm an adult. <laughs> are you, though? No. Um, so, he looks considering, and he's like, if that's the case, then... I'll be off work probably around midnight, and if nothing else, I can meet you at the Whale's Belly. I usually have a nightcap there before I return home. What oh. time is it? Uh, you guys left kind of in like the oh. early evening. It was still light out, but it was starting to get dark. So it's probably okay. around eight or nine. I will be in and out of town for a little while. Maybe I'll catch uh, closer to the weekend when there's, you know, Yeah. But thank you. Sure. Um, can I get you guys anything, or it sounds like you'll be moving on since your friend isn't here? It's like, can we get something to go? I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, they probably have to go boxes <laughs> made of rice paper or something. Like, super reinforced. I don't know. Look, I don't want to waste your time here. Let me buy you a drink, and I just give him a cold piece. <laughs> He looks really startled because that's not <laughs> what a drink. That's that's a generous drink. Not like a, here's a silver. It's like at the well, bottle. Yeah, I know, right? It's like I certainly do hope that I see you around. He is now pretty clearly thinking that you're like a rich tourist who's here visiting, looking for some, some tail. Yeah, some expensive local tail. So he's just <laughs> like, oh well, don't sure thing. And he he looks around real quick and tucks it into a pocket um, instead of in his little fold apron thing um and i certainly do hope i see you remember dancing friday saturday sunday what did you say i didn't hear you i uh, said wear something skimpy <laughs> <laughs> there's no dress code Oh, well, in that case. <laughs> <laughs> no shirt, no shoes, yes, the service. Okay. Sorry, is that a Hawaii thing? <laughs> okay. All this, all the, everyone has the sign on there. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Okay. So, yeah. Um, if you guys want to get up and leave, they look sad that you won't be giving them more money. But, you know, you could leave now. I'm sure somebody's going to be here more frequently now. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I was, like, writing this down. My new place. <laughs> An address and everything. Easy tail located at. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what would you guys like to do now? So there was one more bar that we're aware of that Lucian 
tends to go to, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Shall we head over there? If that's what you guys want to do. Yeah. Every, uh, what route, if someone wants to ping on the map, would you like to take? Do you want to cut through the political quarter sector? Sorry, since everyone's mad about the quarters thing. Or do you want to follow the main road? Is this annotated on the map? Am I missing it? Yeah. Where we're at now? To the south. Okay, so that's south. where we're at now? Yeah, this is where you're at now. Gotcha. You can weave through the alleys of the buildings in this section here, or you can follow along the road. The uh, bar that you're heading to is this. How busy is the road? Uh, you've got people return at this time of night, a few late stragglers returning home from work, mostly people doing something very similar, and either on some kind of crawl or getting dinner, heading home from dinner, or something like that. I. I just give a quick little telepathic um, nod to Florian to basically head south towards the farming quarter. I just want him to stay within my mile. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, if you want him to stay, is it, it's within a mile? It's within a mile. Oh, he's certainly way out, out of a mile at this point. Um, you, well, I probably would have been doing that the whole time, just trying okay. to keep him. That's fine. He's got all my stuff in case we get a problem. <laughs> That's fair. Um, if you you want need to him put him right where the danger is because he's the one who can actually stop it. <laughs> he's the one with all the really good rules. Um, yeah, if you want him within a mile of the bar, I would have him probably be at this uh, crossway here. Oh, okay. Like I said, I don't have a really solid scale in mind for everything just yet, but that's where I would say is definitely within a mile. Okay. Yeah, that, that's cool. I just don't want him close to me because I don't want him giving us away. But I need Fair. him close enough that I can talk to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, but outside of that, which which way would you guys like to go? If someone wants to just draw it on the map, you can also draw it. Do you want to get stabbed in an alley or stabbed on the road? Oh, but I love <laughs> alleys. <laughs> alleys it is. <laughs> <laughs> And no one said I don't really care which one. I'm pretty sure something bad is going to happen. Yeah, I'm just shot. It's far more likely. All right, so I'm going to paint a line if it'll let me. And you guys tell me whether or not this looks like a good path. You would leave the bar, go this way, and you could just cut through here. Come down, and then you're at the bar. Looks good to me. Look uh, good? Yep. I, I need everyone to roll perception for me. Of course. Yay. Yay. Mm -hmm. There's that nine again. <laughs> Jen, what's happening? Two nines. Yep. It's like I have a good perception check. Just, just very, very bad rolls. Uh, Alaris, was that 12 yours? Yep, that was mine. Okay. Um, nothing seems amiss. You guys continue along your way. The usual passers by. What? What are you laughing at? Uh, you guys end up at the whale's belly. The whale's belly is everything you expect. Seems shut up. Is everything you expect from a sailor's tavern, complete with various weapons and trophies decorating the dark wooden walls. Again, that's what you can see from outside. It's up to you. I'll give you a subscription once you decide to enter, or if you do. Yeah, I walk in. Okay. Um. As you've been walking in this area, it's not quite as strong as it would have been in the fishing section, but everything here smells like fish. As soon as you left that political and legal area, it's immediately apparent that they've clearly been doing something to freshen the air, and everything here just stinks of fish. But once you open the door and step inside, that is finally overridden by really strong ale and spirits in the kind of way only a dive bar will, where it's the walls, the floor, the ceiling, all of it. <laughs> Um, the larger tables that you can see, there are about three or four of them, are all completely filled. Um, a couple of seats maybe here and there, but for the most part they're all filled. Each one has a different competition taking place. Uh, a drinking contest, an arm wrestling competition, and then one that seems split into a, po a card game and a dice game. Uh, there are some smaller tables that have seats, not all of those are taken, and those are set up by the fire and the windows. 
as you move further in, like as you enter and get out of the entryway, um, you need... actually no, not yet. So with that, uh, whoever wants to enter will roll me a perception roll, and then we'll see who gets this bit. <laughs> Sure, I will walk in. Jin, you asked for perception instead of investigation. I'm giving you the perception rules. Fine, I will go in with the perception check. And I do investigation instead of perception. Yeah, if you want to. Well. I'm going to put it this way. Either one of those works. Like, do you see that number eight beside the word perception? I'm just, you know, used all of my good rolls last night trying to kill you all, apparently. Yeah, yeah you nothing did. Left. You to did. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Well, Alaris is the only one who really twigs to this. Um, through the bar past all of the really large busy tables um, on the kind of opposite end of where the fire is, uh, you see a heavy door with a metal sign on it which has painted on a faded image of, you know, the symbol for steam, where it's like a half circle and the lines of steam coming out. Um, being from the area, actually, this is perfect. You would recognize that this is the sign of a sauna or a hot room, um, which in this area in particular is really popular with dock workers, sailors, farmers, after a really long day of manual labor, they can go in there, relax, and then once they're sufficiently dehydrated, they go and get wasted on beer <laughs> in the main room, and then they go home. So it's perfect. Uh, works for everybody. Uh, an orc is seated on a stool by the door, leaning back against the wall, reading a battered book, and none of the rest of you seem to have noticed that on your first pass. A full orc? Huh? A full orc? Half orc, sorry. Okay. Is it a romance novel? <laughs> okay, so you're not Isn't close cute? enough. You're not close enough. Oh, he's cute. He's all right. He's not like super cute, but he's pretty cute. He's all right. Does he have all of his tusks? You didn't roll high enough. I'm asking for Wiscava. <laughs> he's he's pretty cute. Again, not like really cute. He definitely has both of his tusks. That's nice, and he seems in pretty nice shape. You know, he's acting as a How bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you because you can't see them from there. So <laughs> I'm not asking for me. I'm not there. He's asking for Wiscava. <laughs> you guys are on a mission to get Wiscava. No, Jesus wants it just as much. <laughs> Wait, so I'm playing an board. I have to have my fun out of character. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, it's focusing. So I know. So everybody has walked in. Uh huh. Arazu and Muscava, that's a really familiar fireplace. Yay. A familiar fireplace. I'm going to elbow Jin and nod at the fireplace. Right. I'm going to um, nonchalantly put my hand on my forehead and <laughs> tell Florian to come much closer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where do you want uh, ping on the map where you want Florian to... So, okay. so where, where are we? Where is this bar on the map? We are here. All right. Okay. I'll label I, would, it I would have labeled things if my uh, tablet was working. I got you, boo. Okay. Thanks, yeah, boo. I, I want Florian to come behind the bar. Okay, that's perfect. That little alleyway actually has a few other various speeds, especially for the workers. Yeah, the doing that again. So there are horses there, but... Oh, I should do that, too. That's, I hear a scut. Okay. So, so they can sweat out the fish oils. Ew. I can't think of a worse smell or mental or... <laughs> that's what's happening. Extra. Yeah, that's what you said when they, they, the sauna was really popular with the fishermen. With the fishermen, <laughs> the job workers, the sailors, the farmers, the laborers, any of them. This, this particular bar is really full of buff dudes. That's <laughs> where all the workers are. Or at least physically able. We'll put it that way. That might actually be a worse way to put it, but whatever. <laughs> All the so yeah, Arazu and Wiscava, you recognize that fireplace. Okay. Um, I Wiscava gives Arazu the the how do we want to play this look? <laughs> Well, now that I've, I've recognized the bar, I'm going to look around for any 
familiar faces from the memory. Okay. With 17, it's a raucous situation, so you can't see everyone's faces. But of the people that you see, they are not the three faces that you were able to see from the memory. So if you'll remember, you saw three faces. I'll just say one was uh, a dwarf. That was the blonde one. The other one with the, I believe I had it as red hair, woman, human, you assume. And then you saw the young Vaughn, who seemed unrelated, but at least that's a face you would know. You don't see any of those three people. Okay. And you certainly don't see the weird blurry face, dude. Then Arizu will just say discreetly, make sure our friend's not here first. And then he's actually going to separate off to start meandering about the crowd to look more in depth for Lucian. So you're moving closer to the fire or the opposite direction towards the sauna? Um, not the sauna. Okay, so closer to the fire, perception sure. And you're looking for, or investigation, whatever you want, but you're looking for Lucian now? Yes. Okay. Wait, wait, nope, I have luck. I don't have to do that. I oh, have. that's right. I keep forgetting you have that. We need it's to write the first that. one that I've rolled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. We need to write that down so we remember, because the way you roll here sometimes. That's my first one. So that's the first well, time. Today, yeah, but you've been having Shana rolls in other sessions. There you go. That's Improvement. much better. You see Lucian playing a card game towards the ends or towards the middle, towards the end of the middle table. I so said there were like three tables. Mm -hmm. The first one's the drinking, the second one is the card and uh, dice game, and then the last one's the arm wrestling. I will attempt and get the attention of the others discreetly and discreetly. nod subtly in Lucian's direction. Yeah. Yes. I, I am checking out faces over by the arm wrestling competition. Okay. Give me a roll. Huzzah! Roll high. <laughs> Yes! Oh, shit! You get a real good look at everyone's faces and also their muscles and <laughs> nobody nobody from that memory. No one's at this table. Certainly the woman would stand out because she would be the only female at this table. There are women at the drinking contest and at the cards and dice, but none are here at the moment for the arm wrestling. How is it like a tournament? Is it the arm just challenging each other for like direct betting. How how's this working? It's it's a kind of like champion king of the hill kind of thing where the guy who's running it right now is beating anyone, and anyone who comes up and beats him then takes that spot, and people challenge them. And there's just a growing pool going. It's not a lot. It's coppers, a couple silvers, or you know, people will chip in a drink instead of their bet. It's really informal. It's just a pastime, really. As, as with the drinking and the dice and card games. These are all low stakes. This is not a not a high stakes place. What what does the champion look like? The champion here is a... Oh, not a triton. What is it? A turtle. That's a turtle one. I forgot. So, <laughs> so he is a turtle that does not look necessarily like he's who you would think would be winning this competition. Um, doesn't seem really built. Kind of wiry, but okay. See you, Justin. Uh, so yeah. Wiry build, but he's winning. Okay. What's a gin doing? Has everybody else <laughs> moved and did things? Ah, uh, that is back. Jin is, uh, I guess, <sighs> trying to make his way to. If Erzu made motion that. Where yeah, Lucian, Lucian was, or somebody was over there. He would start making his way over there, but he would be doing it while looking around, like looking for anybody he recognizes that might not have been in the dream. Right, right. Special, not yeah. well people. Yes. Roll, roll whatever your heart desires for that one. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. I'm done. They're going into the dice jail. I'm going to score. <laughs> All of roll 20s in dice jail. Yeah, you don't think you see anybody. Uh, well, that'll make it more interesting if somebody's actually there. I'll just go over there. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Alaris, while you were gone, they did find Lucian taking part in, uh, I think, believe it was one of the card games. 
and Wiscava went a little further to check out the arm wrestling closer to the fire, which they determined that fireplace was the one from this memory. Mm -hmm. uh, so they went to check it out. No one has seen, Wiscava knows for sure that no one in the arm wrestling competition are the people from that dream. Okay, and Wiscava so, so far, and Arazu described the people from the dream to me, right? I believe so. Did you guys? Yeah, but we definitely described the the baddie with the blurry. The face. baddie, the blurry, but yeah, he's blurry. I don't know if we really face. Went... Mm -hmm. Okay, if you don't, we described the room, but yeah, I don't think we really described okay. too much about the people in it. Okay, well then I will just walk across the uh, bar and go say hello to Lucian. Go where? Oh, by Lucian. Okay. Yes, by Lucian. Uh, okay. Okay. So you guys are all there <laughs> watching Lucian play cards. Um, he's intent on what he's doing and does not seem to have noticed you just yet. But no one has approached him. You guys are kind of, I'm imagining, not standing over his shoulder looking at his cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be, now that you mention it, I'm... Yeah, I imagine you're a little bit further away. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but what would you guys like to do now? Uh-oh. Did anyone else lose Chris? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Um, I will from across the bar, because I'm on the other room. I'm not the other room. I'm in the room, but I'm on the other side of the bar. I will cover my mouth a little bit. And... Just to, to Lucian be like... Hey, handsome, when you got a second, we need to talk to you. He sits up a little straighter, doesn't look around, but uh, pretty quickly folds and slides in his hand and gets up and leaves the table. Then he looks around <clears throat> and spots you, seems to like take a second since you're not wearing your armor, but walks... Well, Laris is right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah might... he definitely yeah. recognizes you too, so... He'll come up for a drink. Drink would be nice. Yeah. He's clearly at least a little drunk, and he'll wave familiarly at a bartender who will bring over ale. Cool. So now everybody's standing there like buddies with a pint. Is there somewhere we can talk that's kind of a little bit quieter? It's kind of loud in here. We could go into the sauna, but I yeah, don't know actually, if they allow us to take the ale into the sauna. Some saunas don't. Ah, they'll let me. And he'll walk over and nod to the orc, the half-orc. Like, hey, Jib, can they come in with me? And... <laughs> Jib is obviously the name of the half-bar. He responds, yeah, sure, but he'll pull out a bag and hold it open. Lucian will drop in a few silvers, which, you know, understand that will be the pay for you guys to get in. So he's just paid for you. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll wait to see if <laughs> Razu wants to join as well. Um, but he'll walk in right on the inside. Oh, I have it. Just inside the door is a series of cubbies for patrons to put their clothes in. All of them are empty, save one that has a sort of clothing in it. Um, he puts his beer on top of the cubbies, takes off his shirt, takes off his boots, puts them in a cubby, couple of weapons, puts all that away, grabs his beer, keeps walking, and goes through that next door. This so is like a, Yeah. In that, like, fencer, sword fighter kind of yeah. way. Yeah, not bulky, but yes. He's cut. You're good. <laughs> he, he can handle you. <laughs> That's all this is going to be now. It's all this is. <laughs> Finding Wiscava a boyfriend. All right. Um, I will follow suit because I don't want my equipment getting rusty from the sauna. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> You can leave, obviously, under things on, like if you have undershirts, shorts, things like that. You don't need to get completely naked. But I will leave that to everyone's individual discretion. Whatever you want to do. Just know going in clothes or with weapons is going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> no, um, being from the area and a Yanti, 
Alaris yeah. actually goes all the way down and just wraps herself in a tower towel before walking in. Yes, there would be a stack of them on top of the cubbies as well. So nice, big, thick, fluffy sauna towels. The cozy ones. Okay. Yeah, I imagine this is actually something you've probably done before, even if not at this location. I imagine a Yanti would take advantage of saunas and hot rooms. Oh, yes. We love the saunas <laughs> and hot rooms. Yes. Uh, probably just let coil up right on the coals. <laughs> this must not. Yep. As close to the co <laughs> coals as possible. Okay. How about Jin and Muscava if you decide to join? <laughs> Chris, you look like you hate this. You're like hating every minute of it. And I don't know how to help. <laughs> he just looks down. Jin just looks down at all his armor on. <laughs> and his sword and stuff. And he's like. You don't have to go in. Well, I feel like. It's I will say that. <laughs> you can sit outside with Jim. I will say. I will give you. I'll give you this. As you, you wanted to know what kind of book he was reading, uh -huh. I really love that you specifically asked if it was romance, because it is. You see a note that the author's name is Pearl, and I was actually going to ask Becca. I came up with a name, a different name for a book. The only one I had a note on was Jungle Heat, but I came up with the name The Captivating Cephalopod. You let me know if that's okay. <laughs> nope, totally good with that one. Okay, so you see, um, no, you don't see the cover because I haven't been able to imagine it yet. But you see in text along the spine, Captivating Cephalopod by Pearl. <laughs> and it's a romance novel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You what? asked. You asked. You can't even be mad because you asked romance. <laughs> you asked. I had, already, I had already made the note that the, that the bouncer half-orc <laughs> was reading a romance novel. While he was Before there. I asked? Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. Before I asked. Did oh, you before you asked. Huh? Yeah, no, I had the note here. What I had specifically written was, in parentheses, or after the parentheses, an orc is seated on a stool beside the door, leaning back against the wall, reading a battered book. Parentheses. The Captivating Cephalopod, or Jungle Heat, by Pearl. See, when you said he's reading a book, I automatically think, our group, is it a romance book? <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. It's literally always going to be. Trashy romance. Oh, God, yeah. It's the good shit. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So, do you want to join? Do you want to sit outside? Totally up to you. I don't know, because it depends on whether or not is going to join. Yeah, I know. He said he was going to get the call and come back as yeah. fast as he can, but um, we can just shoot the shit in the meantime. <laughs> how long do people... Actually, I, I will ask um, the half-orc. How long do people usually stay in the summer? How long are the sessions? See, that's something I, Shana, don't know, actually. What's a reasonable amount of time? Is it like an hour? So when do people actually start? about 20 minutes. Um, oh, okay. Especially for someone who, who it's their first time going into a sauna. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, if you get more used to it, you can extend it out so long as you're hydrating correctly. <clears throat> okay. Um, to 30 minutes or 40 minutes, but longer than that, and you're... Gonna get... Yeah. Since okay. we're drinking ale, it's probably going to be 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then what he would say is silver covers for up to 40 minutes or an hour. If it's your first time, and then he'll say that. If it's your first time and you've been drinking, I advise 15 to 20. Stay as long as you feel comfortable. If you're not out by 40, I'll carry you out. <laughs> not in a, he doesn't say it in a threatening way. He says it in a, like... This yeah. happens all the time. This yeah, you're gonna have, I'm going to have to carry you out. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to have to carry you out. Don't worry about it. Yeah, she'll go in there, but just for a little bit, just just enough to. Is Wiscava going to pass out? Pass out? <laughs> to have him carry right you out? Immediately swoon? Yeah, no. No, no. I feel like that. Yeah, I don't feel like that's her tactic. All right, if, if she's, she's not even going to completely dress down for it, like. Okay. Yeah, you can walk in full clothing, full armor, full weapons. Well, she's not wearing armor. Oh, no, I know. I meant for Jen, yeah. if he wants to. But yeah, regardless, you guys can walk in with absolutely everything. You'll be uncomfortable, and your roles are going to be a little different if you do decide to stay. But yeah, you can do what you want. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take my armor off. Okay. And I'll, I'll put, <laughs> if I'll put my weapons down, 
But it's not going to matter. They're just going to disappear anyways, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure that the, my pack weapon will disappear once I get five yeah. feet away. Yeah, but my hex blade, I don't know what's going to happen. I was going to ask you about that because I was going to say... like, I guess it depends on how you want to deal with that. Um... Hmm... I actually hadn't really thought about that. What is what's specifically written about hex blades? Do you have that? Like, do you have the? I'll, I'll I'll Google it too. I don't. I knew there was something because it I doesn't knew. really say anything on D and D Beyond in my stuff okay. about it. It just says about the pack blade, which yeah. I can make it the same thing, but I have it as two separate weapons. Mm. Yeah. We'll say then that it adheres to the same rule as your other blade, and that it would disappear outside of five feet. Okay. <laughs> then it's, that's... So, yeah. They'll, they'll disappear when you walk away, and when you come back, oh, look, there they are. <laughs> it, I could just call them from wherever I am. It doesn't yeah, really matter. Yeah, so we'll say you could tuck them underneath your clothes so maybe no one notices that it's kind of weird that your blades just vanished into thin air. <laughs> Unless you don't care. Let's yeah. see so you guys say Becca? Oh, I was going to make a joke about his his packed blade actually screaming for him if he's more than ten feet away, but it gets low. Is it the hex blade? Oh, oh, yeah! <laughs> Mom! <laughs> Mom! <laughs> okay. How you much of a jerk is the Raven Queen? That's a that's what you, you have to ask yourself. <laughs> well, she wouldn't do this, but I want to do this. Where you just hear it just really faintly in your head, like, no, don't leave me. And then the sword disappears. <laughs> no, it's just in my head. It's okay. I just want this. Um, you can stay and, I mean, if, if you want to wait for Arazu, you can stay and talk with Jib, I guess, for a bit. I don't know how long he'll take. Let me see if he's messaged, actually. Nope. Okay. I think we're all three of us are going in, I guess. Right? Yeah. Sounds like I guess so. And anywhere Jin goes, our awesome's going. Like <laughs> that's really straightforward. At least what it seems so far. Okay, so we'll say you guys all walk in dressed to your comfort level. Um inside, really typical sauna setup. A uh, large pile of heated coals in the center and a bucket of water and ladle nearby to continue pouring on it to generate more speed when it seems to run out. Um, the only light is a lantern set up just above in the center of the doorway as you enter. Um, uh, against the far wall is a large figure leaning back, kind of obscured by the steam for now, but you see Lucian seated pretty close next to him. And it's not Lucian, but you hear another voice call out, Oh, good! Make sure you close the door. The last guy couldn't be bothered, and I'm way too relaxed to get up. Do I, rec do I recognize the voice? No. No, you don't. Okay. Good, though. Good, though. <laughs> but uh, you don't recognize the voice. There's plenty of seating. I would say each bench, so you have, like, the three benches on the door that comes in. Each bench probably seats four people. If they're bigger, if you're really small type people, maybe five, if you wanted to get close but yeah, each of the four of you can sit comfortably on the bench. Okay. So, so, he, one so Lucian is sitting next to somebody? Um, so in this U-shape, the guy, uh -huh. the voice, the owner of the voice is on directly across from you. Lucian is on the bench next to him, but as close as can be. So like he's in that corner close to him, but he's not sharing that bench. Okay. Um, yeah, I will under my breath <laughs> before i even get into the main part of the the sauna as we're walking in i will um message lucian hey you might want to put a little distance between you and the locals he's he's been leaning back against the wall um and he leans forward and looks at you and goes not this one just come in <clears throat> Come in, close the door behind us. Okay. So, so Lucian, do you know this gentleman? Can you introduce us? Yeah, sure. And I imagine you step, as, as soon as you kind of step in and close the door and the steam stops escaping in the room, the pressure in the room kind of equalizes, you can see through to the guy again. Um, so now you see a heavily muscled half orc uh, with pale gray skin traced in complicated designs and images in dark ink. Um, 
at least Wiscava and Alaris and maybe Jin would recognize that this is kind of the traditional pattern in Ma'aka. Um, so they're not necessarily images, but they're more geometric shapes and patterns that mean something different to them, particularly in a religious sense. Uh, the tattoos trace basically everywhere you can see, and considering he is only wearing the fluffy white towel, that's a lot. Um, fingertips up through his arms, neck, to the tips of his ears, to his toes, literally everything, over the bald plate of his head. Uh, you realize he must be at least half Vaughn, because he does have dark horns from his temple, which twist backwards and around like a big horns. One is capped with a mithril spike, and the other has matching bands closer to the scalp. Um, da, da, da. Where else did I go? He's wearing a few earrings, and the metal and stones in them glitter dimly in the lights, and around his neck is a single thick woven cord on which is a large fish hook of the heart bone. Um, and yeah, save those adornments, the only thing that he's wearing is that towel. Uh, again, locals in particular, Scott and Alaris, would know that Vaughn and orcs or half-orcs having children isn't uncommon here. Vaughn go with whoever they want to go with. It is a little odd for a half-orc, half-vaughn to have both the skin and build of an orc and also the horns. That's a little more rare. Typically, they lose the horns or, you know, one or the other. But, yeah. So you see this gentleman as you walk in. Lucian waves and goes, this is Wiley. Wiley? Uh, he, he hesitates on the names. He goes, uh, some friends of Urdu's. <laughs> Rather than introducing you yeah. as workers of Guy, he introduces you as friends of Urdu's. He points at Jin and Arazu. Goes, ah, that one's Jin and Arazu. Just wave. Hi, my name is Muscava, and this is Alaris. Uh, Wiley nods his head and uh, <laughs> Lucian actually goes, ah, the, uh, the orc one, she, she wore, uh, we never came up with a term, it's not is a monk for, but she worships Mapele. She work, she lives at such and such location that we still need to name, damn it. <laughs> but <laughs> he, he tags on that line and Wiley sits up a little bit straighter and kind of nods his head respectfully and goes, I'm glad. Thank you. Do I do do I notice like the religious? Do I know the religious significance of his tattoos? Uh, roll me a religion check, and, because yeah. Apelle isn't necessarily the one that really follows tattoos strongly. That would be more Panalu, but they're siblings, so maybe. Sure. If anyone else wants to roll that as well, they can. Or if you want to roll anything else for investigating or perceiving the room or insights or whatever you're feeling. Everyone be engaged. <laughs> Everybody roll something. Everybody roll something. I will Sitting. also do a religion check to see if... Okay. Oh, that's a pretty good roll for me. Oh, that's a... Is that your religion? Yeah, that's my religion. That is very good. Okay. So... Chris, what are you looking for in the room? Or what are you trying to see with your perception? Mm. Just keeping an eye. Is it just us in this room, basically? Yeah, you're you're not, there's nobody else in here. It's just the five of you right now. All right. Like I said, it could easily seat more, but. All right, I'm just gonna keep an eye on things, I guess. <laughs> Until, okay. unless, you know, so, hold my perception action. There we go. <laughs> okay, we'll hold that and let you reuse it when it's more pertinent, shall we say. Okay, and Alaris and Wiscava, you both rolled kind of, you do recognize that a lot of the, his tattoos do focus around Panala, which is the water and percussive god, um, but they kind of seem to pay homage to all of the Ma'aka deities and the family. You... You can't see his back, which is going to be a big piece of it, but from what you can see, each limb almost seems dedicated to a different deity. The legs, one is Tihanu, the other is Nihanu. One arm is Panalu, one arm is Mapele. His chest in the center is Mara, etc. So you can see that these are all worshipful, protective, you know, dedicated. And, and I hate to ask this again, but... The guy's naked and he's big and strong and 
Does, <laughs> does he have a nice symmetrical face? That you know, <laughs> he is, yes, he's. Is... <laughs> yes. So he is. He's large. He's cut in a functional way, not in a bodybuilder pretty boy way, but in a I'm a worker and right. shows and a surprisingly, I won't say pretty, but it's that kind of balance in between classical feminine and masculine traits. Okay. And it's, yeah. symmet it's symmetrical. <laughs> and the yeah. tattoos that are on his face emphasize those traits. We'll say that. So <laughs> the people around with Gava can see that she's like <laughs> trying not she's trying to like look at the tattoos without looking at him and failing and blushing and like being very obvious about it a little overwhelmed but i'm like learning like she's like yeah like almost flustered and okay. yeah <laughs> okay sure wiley certainly if he notices does not comment lucian's gone back to having his eyes closed leaning against the wall Um, so, Lucian, we, we need you to, to look at something for us. Oh, lean forward a little bit and rub his face like, <sighs> all right, I guess that is long enough to enjoy my drink. What is it? God, you oh, well, like an asshole. I don't, right? Did... Did Arazu follow us in? I, yeah, we'll say Arazu followed you in. And being familiar, if, you, if what you're getting at is sharing the memory, I'm sure he'd be willing to. And if he wouldn't, too bad. <laughs> He's not here, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, by that, when he rubs his face, you kind of see the, you saw that he was drunk earlier and kind of swaying a little bit. As he's rubbing his face and he says, all right, that's enough, like I said, enough time to enjoy my drink. As he rubs his face, he seems to sober up really quickly. And he's kind of immediately, not completely sober, but you can see he's a lot more cognizant now. And his moves, his movement is a lot more controlled. Um, so go, okay, sure. And gesture over to Arazu. Jester <sighs> hasn't said anything about Arazu being unwilling to show this in front of other people, so I'm going to assume he's okay demonstrating this in front of Wiley. Um, well, and I'm going to try to distract Wiley anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> distract him. Um, may I do an arcana check to see if I recognize if what Lucian did was similar to a lay on hands that maybe Wiscava would be able to do? Yeah, sure. Fifteen. Okay. What you get, and you have a decent insight, right? I'm not going to make you roll. Your, yeah, your insights. Okay, so with that, I'll say you know it's not archaic, it's not magic, but you get the sense that it's more just self-discipline of be letting himself feel the liquor more when he wants to, and not, you know, no one can instantly decide to be sober, but he can play into the being drunk to let loose a little more, and that was him deciding, okay, yeah, sure, I'll be done with that now. Like, I've had my fun. Let's focus on whatever this world-ending nonsense is. <laughs> so, you can determine that that's what that was, yeah. Um, so, how would you like to go about distracting Wiley while oh, he walks over? So I'm just going to be... I'm just... So, Wiley, um, your tattoos are amazing. Um, I've been thinking about about doing something similar. I didn't want to do it right away because I'm not actually from here, but like, and I, I felt like maybe that wouldn't be appropriate, but I've been here for a while, you know, yeah, he, doing the good work and whoever did it, unless, unless you did, did you do it yourself or? He, he leans, he leans back a little bit, like making a confused face when you say, because you're not from here. And he goes, we're not, we're not like that. Don't worry. You worship the gods, if you would like to dedicate that to your flesh, no one would stand against you. I can introduce you to my artist, if you'd like. Um, she travels, though. I'm not sure where she'll be next, but I'd be more than happy to introduce you. And she 
tails or she curtails the design specifically to you and to your spirit. That that sounds amazing. I would love that. Um, you do. I don't know how. He's gonna say you do need a higher pain tolerance. It is uh, of the tapping technique, and he'll go like this, and we'll just say that you know that that means that it's a what you would recognize it's a long stick with uh, rows of needles on it, and they hold it, and they literally take a rock or a hammer, and they hammer it into you and trace the design that way. Filling it in is always the worst part. How, how do tattoos usually get done in this world? I'm going to like, imagine that, that obviously there's not machines. Yeah, there's no, yeah. So that's obviously out. But I imagine the tapping, the tapping isn't strictly necessary. You don't need that extra percussive force to get as deep into the dermis as, you did, as it does for the ink to stay. Um, the tapping itself is more in this case we'll say it's more of a proof of dedication to the design that you're getting it's more of a connection to it because you're enduring that little bit more uh, i mean I, i'm pretty sure i could take it um, but i mean i no i mean i i don't <laughs> that's me that's not him that's just me. yeah i mean <laughs> obviously you you would i mean it might hurt a little bit. I'm, I, I might have some problems in the beginning, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, with with Mepelay's face, she'll, she'll get me through. I'm, I'm sure she will. Um, so you you do have him sufficiently distracted. His tattoos are one of his favorite topics of conversation, as is yeah. faith. So while and, you're doing that, and, okay. and I totally, if he if he lets me, she's like really tentative. She's not real bold about this. But like she'll like, you know, she's pointing out different ones, you know. Okay. If she gets away, she will totally like. Oh yeah, no. Try to he, him and... He's totally. He even. He even doesn't seem to realize maybe why you're doing that, but like shows you like, oh, this is one of the newer ones, and he'll show you the difference in the raised texture of a more recent versus yeah. a healed one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. Well, and she's no, not like trying like, to introduce like, it. She's just though. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to touch you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's it's a it's just an excuse to poke. Like, oh my god, you're real. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's muscles. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. I get that. That's what she's going for. <laughs> Absolutely. And he's not picking up on it. It's creepy. I don't think it's. You're good. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's just kind of like, yeah, I know. Tattoos are great. The gods are great. Hell yeah. Let's have this chat. So <laughs> while, while you guys are talking, uh, Arazu shows Lucian the memory. And I'm assuming Alaris and Jen are paying attention to that conversation? Yes. Okay. So while Lucian experiences it, he kind of gets really tense, and you see the, a similar upset expression um, that crossed his face when he heard the assailant talking shit on Urdu. Um, and so when he's done with the memory, he comes out and goes, God, that was here. You know, redundantly, because you guys know that now. But he goes, so how long ago is this? And, you know, Arazu doesn't know. You guys, from the information that you gained in the memory, you can't tell specific dates. You know, he didn't happen to look at a calendar. So, or <laughs> I was going to say, was there a calendar on the wall? And unfortunately, I would have added that in. There's no calendar or, you know, newspaper or anything that would indicate a date. Sadly, it was. It didn't happen to be. You saw a scene from a festival that only happens once a year, so you knew it was that. You know, unfortunately, no timestamps. Um, but you knew it must have been somewhat recent, in that you know Arazu accessed it very quickly, and finding older memories, unless he's specifically aiming for them. You know, I imagine he kind of goes through them chronologically in reverse order. Which is why he experienced that pain of being stabbed by Jen first, <laughs> before diving in. So, yes. So you guys could tell him that he that you don't know when it was. And has he seen the? I'm going to ask him. Have you seen that symbol? <laughs> the 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 spike buckler. I don't really. Before. It's like I don't really. Remember the the shield, right? The shield with the crossed, and because he's been flashing it a lot, we'll say that Arazu creates the minor image of it, our minor illusion. And <laughs> yeah, he's already done it before. <laughs> he, he likes flashing that ability around. And every, look at this thing I made. Um, it's my macaroni art. And so 
uh, Lucian will kind of go, that does look familiar, but I can't place it. I swear I've seen that, though. Why? What is it? It's like, I, I'm just, in my mind, Erzu, take his memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just be like, well, it, it could be real important if you, if you can remember this. <laughs> Go. I, I think I might have a piece of paper with it on it back home, but I don't know. I've been collecting anything I can find on that. From these sites? Did you collect it from one of these sites where... The evil doctor? Yeah, the, you know, necromancer has been. <laughs> no. Through the, through the still somewhat buzzed haze, he goes, you know what? I bet that's it. Awesome. <laughs> why are you so sad? <laughs> oh, why are you so sad? What I do? So. Hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, Jin's got information that he didn't want, but yeah, it's not specific information. If yeah, that's just it. It's better. not specific enough to figure out where to it's go. Not specific there. enough to warrant panic. It's not like, oh yeah, that's the owner of the bar. You know, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you never saw Jin again. Chris, roll your character. All right. What would you guys like to ask or say or do or where are we at? I know we're missing half of the group, but yeah. so far, Julie, you're carrying for everybody. Yeah, and I haven't seen the the memory, so <laughs> you group, haven't. So it's Erzu and Wiscava who's seen yeah. the memory. So would you like to? Because Arazu, I'm assuming, would have it on open offer for you. Specifically you. <laughs> I don't know about anyone else, but I know he would be willing to show you whatever you want. Hmm. No. It's not different in my head. <laughs> <laughs> this is more you have to lie about if you see that memory. Yeah. Um, well, I would like so. to ask Lucian if he had seen any of the people from the scene that Arazu showed him. If he recognized any of them, since he's a regular. Yeah. He'll, he kind of sits and thinks about it for a second. I, I don't think so. But to be fair, it's, I might be a regular, but I'm only a regular when I'm in town. And that's not very often. From from what you had heard, maybe from Lucian as well. Um, I'm not from Lucian, from Urdu as well. He travels a lot for work. Like, he's not there a lot he's often running for bounties or running errands for other people escorting caravans or peoples of importance that kind of thing so he he is a regular in the sense that everyone knows him but it's more because he's a presence to be known that he's there every friday okay but he does say that he doesn't from his time living here he grew up in a vicro he didn't he didn't recognize them oh okay, messages go away Stop messaging me. I'm two feet from you. It's popping up on street. <laughs> oh, my note keeps popping up. He's sending me links from Reddit. Like, <laughs> bitch. You see, I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> sending sorry as a separate message. I swear to God. <laughs> How do I mute you? I'm gonna mute you. You're two Rude? feet from me. Where's mute? Where's mute on here? Block. Oh, I can just block you entirely. I won't. So sad. Sorry. We're focused now. So once we get... Wiscava's gonna, you know, nonchalantly, she's gonna keep looking back. Once she sees that the the pensive has been put away, mm -hmm. um, she's going to be like, you know, I... I mean, the doorman told me I probably shouldn't stay in here too long when it's I mean, my first, it's really hot. I mean, of course it's really hot in here. It's a sauna, but um, I just, I gotta go. I gotta go. But remember, you pr you promise. I'm gonna take you up on that promise. 
Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I should probably get out of here soon, too. And he starts moving to get up and seems to have forgotten his towel for a second. But oh God. just at the last moment, he grabs it up around his waist. <laughs> the very last moment. He's like, oh, oops. Does not notice. Doesn't seem to pay attention to any of that. And starts and kind of nudges Lucian like, hey, you two, you've been drinking. Let's go. <laughs> Lucian's like, yes, yes. Takes a second to stabilize and stand up. <sighs> He's still wearing his pants. You good? Yeah, I, I pretty much run out of the the sauna. <laughs> like not like full run, but like yeah. Terminator walk right out the sauna, <laughs> not looking back. Power walk, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. Alaris kind of saunters out. Forget this out. little bit of clothes I did take off. Have to go back, grab that. <laughs> She's still steaming. Yeah, literally. <laughs> okay. Alaris, Alaris is the last person out. Okay. Um, closes the door behind her, and she wipes down with a fresh, white, wet towel before she gets mm -hmm. her clothes back on. Yeah, there's that bucket of water, so you yeah. can use that. Okay. But she wants to make sure everyone else actually gets out, because obviously from Wisconsin's <laughs> reaction, perhaps her companions don't normally do this. She's like, oh god, she got a heat real fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, she got her some water. Um, so Wiscava, I'm imagining you kind of, like, book it out of that room. I will just say, Jim might give you a bit of a knowing kind of like... <laughs> like a snicker to himself as you run out, and deliberately when Wile saunters out on his own, goes, have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and Wile, not noticing there's anything amiss, just continues on and goes to one of the small tables to order some food. Lucian goes and sits with him. Is Wiscava yeah. gone when we get out? <laughs> I don't know. Where, yeah, where did Wiscava go? Are you just kind of like, you busted out the door and now you're just kind of standing there like... <sighs> get it together, um, girl. Actually, yeah, she, she takes a second to get I'm her breath. Her then she goes um, to the bar and... Um, orders water. <laughs> Good idea, yeah. Uh, the food... And things that Wiley and Lucian order. It's plates of normal meals, you know, meat, vegetables, bread, mm -hmm. cheese. It comes with big things of water, like the pints of beer, but it's just water. Um, and giving a little look around at everybody, Wiley also specifically orders a bowl of uh, sugared fruits, like candied fruits, because sugar will help. <laughs> what with that water intake. So, yes. Um, does anyone want to join them at the table? Uh, yes, I would like to join them at the table, and I'll have a meat dish, or whatever okay. they have, and if it doesn't have very much salt, I will take a couple of pieces first and actually put salt on it and then eat it and drink some water before looking around <laughs> and wondering if anyone's doing a drinking contest. The drinking contest is still going on, and I'll say, I see, I don't know this because it's meat. Is fish usually pretty salted? Or is that just a weird association in my head, like sea salt fish? So, weird thing about that. Um, hmm. if, the fresh, if the fish is fresh, it should not taste fishy or salty. Unless I remember it's hearing fresh. that. But like if it's breaded and fried. Because that's breaded, what I'm envisioning. Yeah, if it's breaded and fried, then yeah, it's slightly salty. Okay, so if you wanted something salty, and maybe if you said something like that, Wiley would recommend that. And it would probably even come with more salt, because I'm sure they would be familiar with that with the sauna. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we need, yeah. To, we need to have some more salt. Yeah. We need to sweat <laughs> it all out. Yeah. Um, um, okay. No, please, go ahead. I'll say, um, while you guys are eating, Lucian brings up, you know, well, Wiley asks him, you know, so... These are new friends. What have you been up to? Have you been? And I won't role play both characters in this conversation, but their conversation is essentially Lucian updates him on this doctor that he's been following. And while I seems familiar, this has clearly been happening for a little while. And he goes, you know, the only thing I could think of is if you wanted to talk to my brother. And Lucian seems extremely hesitant. Like, oh, I don't want to, you know, like that's, that's the aura he's giving off. He goes, 
yeah, maybe that'd be a good idea. Well, when are you next? <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, when, when are they next getting together? So Wiley will say, well, my brother doesn't really go anywhere. Um, he's off to the west. And that, for you, especially being from that area, you would know that that's kind of like a subtle hint that he's a druid. And so since he's a druid, he does not come into town. You go to him. <laughs> um, in fact, actually, if you want to roll some kind of knowledge check associated with the druids or the local area, something like that, uh, anyone who's listening to the conversation can. But History would probably work. Yeah, sure. If that's what you like to do. Yeah, well, it's the same as my religion, so... Oh, cool. <laughs> 21. Nice. Okay. And it's actually perfect that you're the one who got that. So you maybe didn't recognize the name earlier because maybe his name isn't important, but piecing together the bits, mm -hmm. you realize this individual, Wiley, must be the person you would know as kind of a liaison between the Druids and Evicro because you would know that the only half-orc, half-von Druid, his brother is the person that does that. Because he's the only person that's trusted to kind of go up and back without fucking up the forest on the way, because he knows the rules, essentially. <laughs> uh, so you would recognize that. It's not, it's not like a really prestigious thing or anything like that, but it's really important and people recognize that. Um, so, you know, it's not like he's rich or really famous or anything, but he has an important role in the communication between the Druids and the rest of town. So you would know, if any, if you wanted to get to them, this is the guy to go through. Perfect. I will say, if you're all right with the company and coaching us what to do along the way to make sure that we are within the correct, respectful regulations and protect the forest, we do need to speak with the Druids ourselves regarding the what is going on. And if Lucian is not comfortable going, then we could go instead and fill Lucian in. That way we could divide our forces in trying to track down this necromancer. That would be perfect. They, and he looks over at Lucian, don't get along. <laughs> <laughs> they're so, he brands a little to himself, they're so stuffy. There are so many rules. I want to just do my job and they won't. <laughs> Just kind of muttering to himself in an anti-authoritarian kind of way. Like, it's like it's fucking druids. They have all these regulations. You can't eat this, but you have to wear that. So yeah. Um, Wiley agrees. Because as long as you understand how they are, absolutely. I'd be happy to take you. You seem like good folk. I would really appreciate that. Just let us know when you're ready to go and we will join you and continue our investigations going by the days that we randomly decided earlier so today's thursday <laughs> yep, today's thursday <laughs> we'll say he goes i was planning on leaving by the end of the weekend tomorrow morning i have to drop off something to uh my friend the alchemist leica um or not leake but um i mean if you want to leave as soon as possible we could leave tomorrow i just have to go there first I don't, but I mean, we do have a time crunch due to odd undead things coming to light, but I don't... It's like, yeah, there's, a, there's kind of a necromancer around, you know, it's kind of a thing. But it does he, seem... He wrinkles his nose at that, like, yeah, I've heard. But from what I've seen, and correct me if I'm wrong if what Alaris and all of us have discovered is incorrect, it okay. seems to take him a little bit of time in between projects. <laughs> It would actually uh, be better to do this in a way that we can target his next experimentation site and head him yeah, off if, there. If you're if you're saying that out loud, Lucian nods along and goes, "That's kind of been my thought." So perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get ahead of him, but it's all been catch up so far. So, is it who else, is anyone else at the table, or is this just you, Alaris? Is Jin? Are you there? I know Wiscov is at the bar. Unless yeah, and actually, so af after Wiscava gets her water, mm -hmm. she's going to head back over to the arm wrestling, if they're still doing that. Are they, oh, trash, yeah, talk still going. Are they trash talking each other and stuff? Oh, yeah. it that, that friendly kind of, like, we're all buddies, but yeah, they're trash talking. Okay. 
No oh, one's yeah. trying well, to start a fight, but yeah, like, oh, this little wimpy baby guy here. Yeah, she is. She is about she back. Well, yeah, and she, a little bit, a little bit of crying, <laughs> but she wants, mm. she wants a shot at the champion, but mostly what she's doing over there is listening to the trash talk. She's trying to pick up if anybody is, you know, saying anything as part of their trash talk that, you know, is, you know. In, in line with what you've been digging into? Yeah, in line okay. with, you know, you know, anti... Anti-royalty or anti -royalty. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, no, you don't really hear anything like that. Mostly it's insults to people's ability, you know, yeah. or, you know, in the case that clearly two or three of them all work um, off the same dock in shipping vessels or fishing vessels, and they're, you know, comparing the size of their catches, and, you know, like, well, we brought in this, so clearly you're having an off day, you know, that kind of, that kind of trash talk. Okay. She will totally drop just the, like, little information, you know, that she's... Staying at that big dark black castle, you know, it's a little weird, but they seem okay. Yeah, just trying to see if she can like prod anything out okay. when she gets up there. Um, the champion actually regards you a little more closely with that. And he goes, "Oh, really? With Guy them? Or sorry, the speaking pigeon with Guy and the family? Like, shut up, Chris. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm doing a." A job. Uh, Mepele. Mepele guided me towards him. He he doesn't really seem to respond much necessarily to Mepele, but he nods and you see a couple of people kind of like watching the conversation out and he says, I would never call that place an orphanage. It's more of a, what you call them, a fortress, but he does us a service. Glad you're working with him. Okay, cool. And do I, do I, does he seem genuine-ish? Genuine? -ish? genuine? Do you want to roll inside? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. You hear a couple people mutter, yeah, it's more like a lab or a palace than an orphanage. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, with an insight, you, he seems genuine, like that he really believes that. Um, I'll say you, maybe you hear a couple other people muttering about how maybe he should just make it an official orphanage, since he does tend to take in all of the wayward or orphaned children, but that's kind of the mutterings that go around the circle at your declaration. So I also, I only put down, I, I'm also paying attention to what other people are betting, and I only it's put down that. Coppers. Yeah, it's just coppers. Yeah, yeah I'm not even going to make you keep track of it. Unless you okay. win. Yeah, it'll be just a couple copper. Yeah, no, I, I have no desire to pay these people's money. So she's just putting in whatever they're putting in. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, you'll be next in line then. The <laughs> current, he's having this conversation with you, by the way, currently arm wrestling a guy. Uh, someone and, else, and, yeah. And beating him. And he beats him as he finishes his statement, like, good on you for working with him. And the other guy's like, oh, God damn. damn. And he just, like, walks away. Like, he's not injured, but he's, like, being a baby about it. Like, yeah. dude, I just slammed that hard. Someone pats him on the back, hands him a beer. He moves on. So the chair is open to you. Okay. Yeah, I sit down. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to let you decide dexterity for, so for arm wrestling, right? I do it athletics? I was going to say, here's, yeah, here, you have a few options. You have either just a str straight strength, if you want to be fancy about it with that weird wrist thing that I've never been able to get right for arm wrestling, that would be dexterity. I'd let you do a dex, that weird twist. That's garbage. It's cheating, but everyone does it. Or if you want to use athletics, that's also okay. okay Acrobatics yeah, is not allowed because what are you using your foot? Yeah, no, I want to <laughs> use athletics. Okay, go ahead. There are different... I'm glad, I was glad to see some knowing nods about the wrist thing, because I've said that before. People look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, no, you can do that weird wrist thing that changes where the pressure is. Anyway, okay, hold on. Oh, well, I said all that, and then didn't get my dice. So. <laughs> I'll just roll I've it. i got a high athletics, but a crap roll, so. I know. What oh, my God, you're 13. What happened to you, sir? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Um, there we go. 
Too bad it wasn't Florian rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Florian just sits on the table and breaks his arm. Well, you meet him. You are the current champion at the table. Okay. So, only if she can get away with it, she won't. That's going to be a sleight of hand or deception. Okay. Um, I, so, does anyone have Chester? I see his screen, but I don't have audio or video. I, I don't have him yet. Oh, there he is. Yay. Do we have audio? I do. I could hear Hi. everything okay. glitching, and I don't see Chris. Oh, actually, wait. No. Okay. No. She. She. She, she will. She, how many people are in? How many people are doing this? I'll say there are seven around the table right now. Okay. Plus yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She'll. She'll go ahead and she'll. She'll beat him on this one. Okay. Sure. He just smiles at you like, all right. Who wants to fight the lady next? And I'm, I'm sure, you know, if you were fresh, I'm, I'm sure that would have been different. I'm uh, sure you'll get another shot around on me here coming around. I'm going to finish this drink and I'll be back. And yeah, he'll yeah. step aside and grab an ale and immediately a uh, human sits down across from you and challenges you. Again, like two copper. Yeah. Uh, so real quick to... Catch Chester. Oh, I messed up everything. There it is. Okay. Um, I went to click on something and minimize my screen. I was like, oh, shit. It's gone now. Um, so, so you kind of missed everything. You can go back if you want to watch the stream later. But basically, you guys went into the sauna when you found Lucian, and he agreed to chat with you, introduced you to a half-orc, half of bond named Wile, super tattooed-out guy who is who was happy to help you guys in terms of figuring some of this stuff out and um, has agreed that if you he's who you would need to go through in order to reach the druids easily um, without offending anybody or fucking up the forest and he's more than happy to lead you considering his brother is one of the druids there um, and Lucian's there too right now everyone's eating uh, except with Skava who's at the arm wrestling table currently just beat out the champ yeah now i will say once we are done eating and the conversation draws to a close and we've arranged the time and place to meet up to head out alaris is going to go get in on the drinking competition which we are going to have to discuss because there's yeah. a way that we've done yawn tea with scott and myself but it's going to be okay. up to you to say how you do it okay okay we can get to that too sure to, to catch up, though, since you've been gone, is there anything specific that Arazu would like to do? You did share um, the memory uh, that you got from the assailant with Lucian, and he did determine, yes, this is the bar where that took place, and he was really shocked about that, that such filth would be here in, you know, a bar that he frequents, and he never met them. He does travel a lot, so he's not here frequently, but it still surprised him, and he did not recognize those people. Arizu will, would have asked uh, mm -hmm. who who at the bar might be the best person to discreetly question about these people. He would nod you to uh, the half-orc who had been guarding the door to the sauna named Jib. He would tell you that's the son of the owner. The owner is currently gone, um, so the son's in charge, as it were. And if anyone knows the regulars and who may have stuck out, it would be him. Okay. Arizu probably would have waited for a while, but ended up like trying to find a window where he could discreetly approach and talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, just, you know, showing the, the the busts of uh, one or two of the people that he's been looking for. Okay, yeah, he's just, he's still in the same spot, leaning against the wall, watching the sauna. It's late enough in the night that most people don't seem to be wanting to enter, so there hasn't been anybody nearby. He's just kind of there reading his uh, romance novel by Pearl. You missed that. The captivating cephalopod. Nice. New first edition, you know, nothing, don't worry about it. But yeah, so he's just sitting there reading his smut novel. He's, he's probably at a good part because it takes him a second to notice you when you walk up. Okay. Well, he'll definitely begin with an apology. Yeah, I don't to take you away from your, your reading. Um, oh, that's, that's okay. He'll tuck it in his belt. I, I have a somewhat of a sensitive question I, that I wanted to ask you um, between us while we kind of have a moment alone, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. You, um, you are a good distance away from the nearest table, so. So, uh, he'll, he'll continue there with, uh, there's been some people of interest that have been fomenting some very forward-thinking 
potentially radical thoughts amongst uh, your clientele, and I'm not sure if it's something that you actually endorse. If you do, power to you. But I'm, I'm sort of looking for, and like he does that little, yeah. you know, and like a little mini bus comes up of the three faces that he could see in that memory. He, when you're talking about people kind of spouting an ideology that you don't know whether or not he supports it, he looks really confused. Um, not because these are like, the words are too big for him or something, but because uh -huh. he doesn't seem familiar with what you're talking about. When you show uh, the bus, he goes, well, I think I know that little Vaughn. I think his family just moved here a few months ago. Uh, Dad was a I think a trader, a merchant. I don't know if they settled here, though, but I know they all came in together a few times, and then just the boy came in. But I think it was only the once. Okay, I, and then I throw up an inside check to see if I actually believe his profaned innocence and or story that he has shared. So you you can tell that he's telling the truth about the Vaughn to, after he recognizes the Vaughn and points him out to you. He does look at the woman and the blonde dwarf and kind of makes a sneer face of the dwarf and goes, that one spouts a lot of filth. I told him he's not welcome in my bar anymore. I don't know if that's the ideas that you're talking about, but if you're one of them, you are not welcome here. Do you happen to have a name or where he can be found? Nope. He's only been in here a handful of times, but mm -hmm. I told him he's not welcome. Good. I, I like that answer. And then I'll thank him for his time, and I'll flip him a, a gold coin and meander back to the others. As you're saying, like, you know, good on you for having that opinion, I'll go, if that's your mindset, you and your friends are welcome here anytime. Awesome. And he'll, but he'll be happy, like, ooh, gold coin, I'll talk about it. And then he'll, he'll wait until you're far enough away and pull out the book again. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, new a really part. good part, okay? Sometimes you gotta get hold on. Yeah, I feel like we just have to look for romance novels for this guy. <laughs> oh my god, NPC side fetch quest. If you do, I promise there will be rewards. <laughs> well, apparently there's a way to get a subscription. You know, there's a there dwarf is. running around with a magic bag. There is a dwarf running around with a magic bag that just appears, books. Yep. God knows where that dwarf is, but some wizard, who knows, <laughs> off somewhere. Doing okay. some very interesting things, I assure you. Missing with the bow constantly. Yep. <laughs> so. It wasn't uh, the bow that he missed with, it was his tangling shot that always missed. I see, but his build was melee. It was dual wielding melee. He's like, oh, use my bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least he didn't name it bow and then ground it when it but was bad. You need to name it bow, B E A U, like my bow. Mm. Mm, see? Okay. <laughs> You're being done. Okay, focus. <laughs> We're in this moment in this game. So, Wiscava is currently crushing the arm wrestling competition. Alaris wants to join the drinking. Mm -hmm. um, Arazi just had his moment. What were you saying, Becca, about how do you guys do Yanti and drinking competitions then? If it's so, not. Alaris would not even join the drinking competition if oh. Yanti are familiar enough with the people of Avikro to realize that she is completely immune to poison, which means she can't actually get drunk. Okay. But uh, the way we yeah. run it, though, is that she will, if she's not careful and over imbibes and does not hydrate well enough, have a hangover the following day. Okay. Um, so you get the hangover symptoms, but not the impaired judgment of drinking. Right. Okay. So they would be familiar. Because you're more enough by the city. Yeah, then she, she would not join the drinking competition, though. But she will walk over and watch them. Yeah. They would, someone nearby would essentially say, you're welcome to join, but just don't take part in the betting. And you can see there's probably a couple Yanti who are there, too, mainly just using the competition as an excuse to drink in excess, just to be <laughs> <laughs> like they all they all know that they're not going to get drunk unless maybe it's a half on tea and they can somehow but for the most part they're just there to have fun <laughs> they know that friends yeah yeah I they're will, social i will hang out and use it as a social opportunity to ask okay. regarding how things are going around this area how's the fishing being been and all of that stuff okay 
Okay. Um, most most of them are saying that things are fairly normal, fairly good. A couple people mentioned that they've heard of someone that's been getting some weird catches that like just the fish don't look right. Someone said that some of the fish have teeth and it's not the normal ones. Because I know some fish have teeth, but these ones have like people teeth. It's weird. So yeah, Alaris will ask more about these strange people teeth fish then. Try to get a good description so she can write in the book for Ur Urdu and with the okay. note add sea tails coming out from the naval quarter so that Urdu oh. can know that possibly there might be some things in the sea that she's going to want to yeah. take a look at. Maybe something that, that she hasn't seen before. So yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you'd be able to get a fairly good description. The, the the best way I can describe it, since I can't illustrate it for you yet, is um, it's kind of just like a standard carp, but um, where the eyes would be, there aren't any, and the mouth stretches back a little further than the normal gills for a fish mouth, and when it is when they pried it open, it was like normal blunt human teeth, so omnivorous teeth, rather than fish that have teeth tend to be carnivorous, so they'd be all pointy. These are, they seem to be designed for both. Hmm. The uh, ripping, piercing, and grinding, which is what our teeth do. Okay. So I, I say all that because Alaris would know enough about that to be able to write all that down. Yes. Yeah. And Erdu would like that. <laughs> Extra details. All the so, yeah. details. <laughs> you just know that's that's been coming up in the area. So, yeah. Okay. What about Arazu and Jin now? Anything else you guys would like to do? Um, nope. Jin is just in there eating. <laughs> You're just happy to have just like, Yeah, and then he's just like looking around. Where'd everybody go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I imagine when you some of this conversation, Arazu will come back to the table with you, but uh, you're, if you're still at the table, you're there with Wiley and Lucian and... Yeah, I'll just listen to their conversation, see if I pick up okay. any, on anything. Yeah, I'd have come back to the table after I had my conversation okay. with York. I just meant like I didn't have anything. Yeah, no, that's that fine. Was the, the best point of contact in the bar. That was the extent of the investigation that can be conducted here at the moment. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Well, as far as you know. But, okay, if you want to order food and water and stuff, you're welcome to. Uh, there is a bowl of candied fruit there to help with such goes with the sauna and all that water retention. But you can get like fried salty fish and stuff like that. Um, as far as the conversation that Wiley and Lucian are having, it's very much Lucian telling him all the details of what he's found um, at these various sites as he's tracking the doctor and what he discovered in the ruins of Maleka, uh, where you guys were. And he described your encounter and the attack on Urdu. Um, Wiley looks really distressed at the thought that someone would attack her. And he specifies like, and she was alone? He goes, well, the golems were with her. He goes, oh, well, the golems were with her. And then seems to kind of rush out, like, okay, well, she wasn't alone then. Um, as that is clearly their intended purpose. Um, and yeah, so they just update on that, and that's that. Uh, Lascava, do you want to keep rolling for your arm wrestling to see when you get um, beaten? Or... I can do that. I, I don't know. It's however you oh, want to do it. Well, it's, it's, we can either do that or you can let me know, like, after you win, how many rounds would you like to tap out? Well, okay, so this, this is her plan. Yeah. Well, not her plan. Well, okay. yeah, what's yeah. your idea? So, after she gets about three people in, mm -hmm. she's going to call out, Hey, Wiley, you want some of this? <laughs> <gasps> okay, I will specify the arm wrestling. It's the furthest, it's on the opposite side of the tavern, so you have to yell if you want oh, to yell. Oh, she does. She does. Okay, so oh, man. Yell. <laughs> Wiley sits up and leans leans back to, like, look over at where you are, and you hear, like, some cheering go up along the way. <laughs> he looks a little surprised, like, all right, <laughs> stands up, walks on over, sits down. Okay, yeah. Come on. Hey, put up, put up your money. Put up your copper. 
<laughs> this is a bet. Yeah, even <laughs> better. This works. That's um, how this no, He would know that, so he would put down. He actually would forgo the copper, and he put out a silver. Let's watch their mating okay. dance. <laughs> yeah. Um. And when we when we lock up and we get ready, I will give him one hit point of healing hands. Why? Because she's about to crush him. <laughs> no, just, just just because when she does it, it's like the worth of mepole. It's like. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fair. It feels good. <laughs> okay. I, will, I will roll and wait. Are you rolling athletics? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Then I need a different score. For him. Oh, I don't have his sheet on here. Damn it. Oh, there. Okay. Oh my gosh. He got a one. It doesn't, matter. it doesn't matter what you roll. Here, you're, you're, I can roll one. one. His hand, yeah, but you're not hand felt so you're good. Not, you, oh God. He, he does, he is startled immediately by the warmth, and I'm going to say that's why you beat him. So he clearly is kind of distracted and like doesn't engage for a second, and you beat him. And then he gets this kind of, um, for anyone who has sparred before and had a partner who has like a surprising move, and then all of a sudden you're like, ooh, this is going to be interesting. He kind of like scoots back in his chair a little bit so he can like really lean into it. And he's got this fighter spark in his eyes like, oh, this is going to be good. What? And he puts a, he, then he takes a gold and okay. pops it down on the pile. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I go, I do it. Okay, don't give me a fucking one again. Come on. This is embarrassing. You're designed against this. <laughs> oh, thank God. Okay. You're designed to be better. Out of 24. Oh my god, I hate you! <laughs> well, I, I, like, I, yeah, I don't do my mood this time. I. Oh, okay, then I don't have distraction. Or then I'm not at disadvantaged. Okay, wait, what is that, 28? Oh, by one! Oh, that's embarrassing! He's supposed to be so much stronger, but that's okay. So it's a struggle, it's a fight now, but he barely manages to get you, and he gets your hand down on the table. And when he releases, and he goes, <laughs> I, I don't have a specific phrase for it, but he'll say something that's like a, a prayer to Panalu. Okay. Like, I just totally, really, after, like after, he's, 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 after he beats me, because it's a struggle, mm -hmm. after I put my hand down, I give him another point of healing. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, that's tricky. Because <laughs> I've never been able to do something like that. Oh, well, you're the champion. Have fun. <laughs> he, and I he get up laughs. Yeah. Well, go ahead. And then I get up from the table with, with the cop, with the, with the the change that I already won, and I use that just to buy drinks for everyone else who's playing, including him. Yeah. Okay. So he actually laughs as he stands up and says, "That's just what I was going to do." And. Jib has already been coming over with a tray of ale for everybody. And sure enough, you kind of get the feeling that this is usually what happens with yeah. like the arm wrestling contest. Since it's such pocket change, it just translates into yeah. drinks for whoever's playing. Yeah, they're all friends. Yeah, they're all buddies. Nobody's... Yeah. This is not the bar with real competition. So yeah, no, he, he laughs in agreement. And as you guys are moving away from the table, he'll probably like elbow you like a bro <laughs> and then go back to sit at his table with Lucian. And it is, I would say it is getting late now. You guys have been yeah. cavorting for a while. So we'll say that it's probably around 11 or so now. And no one ever comes in that we notice. If you guys want to roll times. me more attentive. I'm going to call them attention checks for this because it could be perception or investigation. Chris, stop rolling like me. What's happening? All these threes and fours. That's like all you've been getting all night. Yeah. It's been terrible. You say that like it's my fault. Okay. That's um, a good one, though. Yeah. Our, our non drunk Yanti is. Yeah, no, she's killing it. You, despite having your fun, you're keeping a really vigilant eye for. These two people that you've now, or these three people that you've now seen the image of, and you're you're keeping an eye out for all those things. You know that none of them enter or leave the bar. Like they're not here, and they were not here, and they do not arrive or any of that. So you know it's good. I'll say, uh, Jin, you don't notice. With Skava, you're a little distracted. In Arazu, you would back Alaris on this. You also don't see any, anybody. Two. 
as as the night is winding down, you guys can we'll, we'll say last call goes out for drinks and people start heading up and leaving. It is a work night, after all, th- a Thursday apparently. Yes, not that's been determined. <laughs> but shit, I'm gonna have to keep track. I'm gonna write that down because I will forget. It is a Thursday. Okay. <laughs> I'll forget. I know I will. Yes. I'll start writing this tomorrow when I'll be like, oh, the Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I know I will. Okay. So what would you guys like to do? Do you want to... I'm not going to prompt you. What would you guys like to do? So, um, Alaris is probably going to wrap up her night and head back to Jin's compound. Okay. And get some rest. Um... Did we make arrangements for one more meeting to have work to go to the druids? Uh, we did. I did specify that Alaris was not going to head over to the drinking competition until they had solidified the time yes. and the place. But and they did have somewhere they needed to go no matter what before we headed out. So that our time and place was revolving around that. Well, yeah. we could go with them, but they just have to do this first. So. Yeah. The, the prompt was essentially that whether you guys want to arrive there when he arrives there or when he's done with his business, he needs to visit the alchemist on before he leaves. He, if you probe further, he says basically that they're a friend and he has something to deliver them from his last time underway. Or, sorry, out at sea. And if you guys, oh, to specify, it's a shame that Auntie is not here because up to the north, the alchemist is the same shop where Auntie got Katsu, her chicken. So it's that alchemist. Okay. So I will be coming there. I will definitely let Auntie know. <laughs> We're coming back. We should get some special feed for Katsu. Not that Katsu can't eat literally everything you guys have tossed at him so far. Here, undead scraps. Go ham. <laughs> it's a chicken. It's good. But yeah, so those arrangements have all been made. Um, Wiley specified that, or not specified, but stated that he had just been planning on leaving before the end of the weekend, since this is now Thursday night. That would be Friday. You guys meet up. If you want it to be later, you can meet him there then and discuss with him postponing it, whatever, but he's letting you know that that's where you can find him tomorrow to decide one way or the other. Sure. If you guys just want to head back to guys for now, that's fine. We can just call it here. Yeah, I'm still looking for guys, so. <laughs> He's out on business. He goes on business trips. Well, okay. If is- asking, doesn't he know who's in charge in this relationship? <laughs> All right, that would go well for you. I'm going to stop recording or stop streaming. I, then. Yeah. I, I do meet up with Florian first. Okay. Back in my armor. I never watched.